Just like a programming language, you can use a variable to hold a value. In Little Horse, you can use variables too. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can define variables and manipulate variables in Little Horse. On the Little Horse dashboard, you can find all the variables that you defined. You could find their types and values. You could search variables too. In Little Horse, each variable has a unique ID. In this variable ID, here's a variable name. And because a variable is associated with a uh, workflow run and a thread run, the variable ID also has a workflow run ID and a thread run ID. I'm going to show you how it works in Python. I'm going to walk through the example step by step. All right, now let's move to the workflow specification. This is similar to our previous example. In the workflow specification, we're creating a variable in Python, the name. We add this variable using the method addVariable, which takes two arguments, the name of the variable, in this case, input name, and the type of the variable, in this case, it is a string. So basically, we add a string variable input name to our workflow. Um, so here, the name is a variable in your Python code for you to refer or manipulate in this workflow specification. It is not a little horse variable. Input name, however, is stored in the little horse engine. This input name is a workflow variable. So if we go to the dashboard, you will find a variable input name. You will not find the name in the dashboard because the name is not stored in the Little Horse engine. And the name only refers to input name in this Python code. And if you want to pass this variable as an argument to your task definition, you will need to do that with a variable in your Python code. Um, in this case, the name. Now, because they both are variables, you can change the value of the name in this Python workflow specification. You can also change uh, the value of input name, which is a workflow variable and is stored in the Little Horse engine. We could make it searchable in Little Horse. We could use the variable as an input to our task. Here, we pass the name to the greet task as an argument. Uh, we could also define a variable and pass the output from a task to the variable. For example, from the title name function, we get a return cap name. We could assign this output to a variable in Little Horse. Let's call it uh, title name output. And from there, you could use this output in your workflow specification. For example, here I am defining a new variable. Also make it searchable. Um, I'm going to assign this output to the new variable. You can change the value of a variable. You can do other operations like adding or subtracting integers or appending a string to your variable. Um, all right, I'm going to run a task and pass this variable as an argument. That's the workflow specification. Now let's go ahead and run the worker. Register the workflow in Little Horse. And then start our workflow with a customer name Edward. In the terminal, we could see the output message. We could also find the workflow from our dashboard. It is completed. We could also search our variables like input name or uh, title name output. These are the two variables we define in the workflow specification and get registered in Little Horse. We could run another one uh, with a customer's name Jacob. In the terminal, there's a new message for Jacob. On the dashboard, there are two workflow run completed. One is for customer Edward, and the other one is for customer Jacob. We could search these two customers. I'm searching with a formatted name, Jacob. Uh, you could find the workflow run for customer Jacob. 
Workflow variables are very helpful. You can store current states of your applications. For example, you may have a workflow for order management. You can search all the workflows. You can query customer data, all the current states, export them from LittleHorse to your analytics tools. And from there, you can gain some insights of your customers and products. All right, I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Make sure to check out our website and GitHub for more information. Thanks for watching.